All right. It looks like we are live. How's it going? How is everyone doing today? Thank you so much for joining me uh, on a very rainy Tuesday in the desert. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Jason Levine, and for today's brief live stream, I'm going to talk to you about simple and easy masking and tracking for effects and as an alternate secondary color correction technique in Premiere Pro. Now, many of you may be watching, I know, on our Facebook uh, Adobe video page, focused on using Rush. And uh, hey, David, presenter from Stormy UK. So you know that, of course, if you are working in Rush, you can send your Rush projects to Premiere, and you might just want to do something um, like doing some track uh, masking things and maybe tracking for effects or color. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to do that. What's up? Oh, it just went away. Abshleta, good to see you. Camille, how are you? Um, the coolest thing about this is this is incredibly easy to do. It doesn't change your workflow at all, and you can effectively create a mask on any type of effect. What's up, Tomahawk? Bobby Barker. Um, you can create a mask on any type of effect really quickly, either with an elliptical style mask, a uh, rectangle, or even the freeform pen tools. You can draw your own mask real easily. You've got feathering options, expansion options. You're just going to see how cool and easy this is. So, all right. So again, thank you so much for joining me on YouTube as well. Ashish, nice to see you. Ashish, Arabic designer. Donald Ping, hello. Chris Vanaslen from Austin, how are you? And Pierre Julien, returning. <laughs> what is up, Anel Henning? Very nice to see you. Okay, so with that, and Ali Khan joining us as well, and Mamodi. Okay, so many great people in our chat from all over the world. It's always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Okay, so once again, uh, just to be real and fresh, I just grabbed some Adobe stock content. And um, what we want to do is we want to perform a little mask on this particular video here. Now, generally, when you see something like this, you know, if you see it in TV or whatever, uh, they might be masking a character's face to blur it out or to mosaic it. This is kind of the most common when people think of sort of masking things or maybe blurring out a logo. You see this in reality TV all the time. What's up, Scrozier88? So there's lots of reasons why, all right? I'm just showing you this in two different methods, one for effects and one for color, to really showcase how easy it is and how cool it is when you use this automatic tracking built into Premiere Pro. So again, this could have come from a Rush project, it could come from anywhere, it could, be, it could come from After Effects if you didn't feel comfortable doing your masking over there. So this is a 4K clip. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna show kind of a blur example, right? So this you see all the time in news and TV and episodic shows where they kind of blur out a face. So let's do that here. So I'm gonna come down, now you can't see my effects panel, it's behind my video here, but I'm just going to search on Gaussian blur. And uh, I'm going to add a blur to my clip here. Sorry, I was in the wrong panel, all right. I'm going to just take a Gaussian blur and I'm going to double click and add it to my clip here. Now you can see it appears right over here inside of our effects controls panel. And what you'll also see is that we have three little tools right at the top here to create an ellipse mask, a four point polygon mask, or a free draw bezier. All right. So this is going to allow us to mask a section of this video and then apply that Gaussian blur. All right. Now to do that with the best accuracy, because again, I've got this fitting into the window here, I'm gonna zoom this up to 100%. So this is 100% of the 4K video right here. Let's get it into frame. And I'm gonna start by grabbing the free draw Bezier tool, all right? Um, we could probably do this with uh, an ellipse mask, but you'll see why I'm choosing this one in just a moment. So I'm just gonna start by drawing a basic mask. By the way, I'm not that great at this. You'll see very quickly. Uh, quickly, a little mask around her face. All right, we're actually gonna get down here to her neck. Again, you'll see why in just a couple of moments. All right, now we could actually bezier these points as well and make this a bit smoother. I'm not gonna worry about total accuracy here for right now. Um, we have tools in the masking controls here which will aid and assist us where that's concerned. Maybe we'll just adjust this one right here. So very quickly, whoops, very quickly created a mask. Now if we just go down to some of the options here, again, you'll see you have mask feathering, mask opacity, 
mask expansion. The feather is default to 10%. If you take a look at the mask, watch what happens as I increase the feather. You can see that it's doing just that right on screen. So maybe we'll make it around 12%. If we want to expand that mask, okay, globally, we can choose a little mask expansion here. And you can see how that works. So real simple, real easy implementation and controls. Also, if you wanted to choke the mask in, you'll notice that it does that. So it's a combination of expansion and contraction if we wanted to do that here. Really cool, really easy to do. All right, so now we wanna follow the motion of our character walking in the scene. So you will notice that we have a series of transport controls here. And the one that we're going to use is to track the selected mask forward. So let's go ahead and click on that and it begins doing its thing. And while it's doing that, I'm going to take a sip of coffee and look over into the chat. Pablo, whoops. Good question, Pablo. Yes, Rush is a mobile app, but it also has a desktop component as well. So there's a desktop version of Rush and the projects from Rush, whether authored in mobile or desktop, can be opened directly in Premiere Pro. All right, so this is a workflow that you have right now available to you. And if you do that, that'll allow you to use the masking and tracking tools in Premiere. Okay, so it looks like we're just about done. And there we go. All right, so now if we play this back, let's go ahead and zoom back out to fit. You can see that we have successfully tracked her face as she's walking through the scene. I didn't have to author a single keyframe myself. Does an amazing job. And by the way, this was on, you know, uh, a watermarked, low res MP4. So, uh, and that's a good question. Uh, Tomahawk asks, does it work with CCTV footage? I mean, it'll work with any footage. Obviously, you know, the mask, the, the, the tracking of the mask itself automatically will only be as successful as sharp and good as your shot is. So if you have like CCTV content where, um, you know, sometimes again, you're just dealing with kind of a lower bit rate, probably export, um, you can always manually um, adjust any of those tracking points, right? So we could go in frame by frame and just tweak them if need be. So yes, it works on any footage, but of course, how well it works is really gonna be dependent upon how good the shot was. This one was pretty good in focus, pretty good in focus, in pretty good focus. Um, and also again, this is even the, the watermarked low res preview file. If we got the full 4K, I'm sure it would even work even better, even a little bit more accurately. The point is that we did this with a Gaussian blur. So now what do we wanna do? We wanna blur the face, right? That's kind of the standard thing that you do. So I can come over here to blurriness and you can see I could just blur that out. All right, if you wanna click away so we don't see that mask, let's just go ahead and play this back now. And real quickly, real easily, blurred, identity concealed, okay? So that's a real quick and easy way to do things like, again, blur a face, blur a logo, blur anything. But what if you don't actually want to use masking and tracking for effects? Maybe you actually want to use it as an alternate way to do some secondary color corrections. Now you do have HSL secondaries available to you inside of the Lumetri color panel. And as I scroll over here, I'm just going to zoom in for a moment. You can actually see it right here, HSL secondaries. Now, why wouldn't you use HSL secondaries if you wanted to say tone up just the face and kind of neck skin tones here? Well, you absolutely could. The only thing is that from within Lumetri, you only have one secondary per layer. So you'd have to create another layer of Lumetri to mask something else and apply that. If we wanted to make several masks on this, again, we can do it in the same way by adding additional layers of Lumetri right in here. The difference with using the set color key options and creating the actual mask is just that if you create the mask, it'll affect only the area in the mask. If you use these set color key options, well, you can see that her skin tone can sort of be found in some of the, the pillars here. So if I wanted to do a secondary color correction for skin tone, it's probably going to affect the background elements as well. And I don't want that, all right? So while you can use these in conjunction, you can use multiple ones. Applying multiple ones is the same. You're gonna have to add a secondary layer anyway but it's in terms of accuracy. If I make that mask, it'll only affect this section. If I take a color sample and I sample her skin tone, I mean, you can see this right here. These are, these are very similar. So that would mean we'd be affecting the color of these pillars and we don't want that, all right? So this is an alternate way to leverage masking and tracking 
for color correction. Now we've already done the mask path, so I don't wanna to have to do it again. So once again, I'm gonna come over to my effects controls. It's behind me in the, in the view here. And I'm simply going to double click to add a Lumetri color effect, all right? So let's come over to Gaussian Blur, let's twirl it down, let's select the mask, come up to Edit, and we're going to copy the masking and tracking points, the keyframes that we just made. Come over to Lumetri, select that now, and paste, and what do you see? That we have now just pasted all of those keyframes automatically to the Lumetri color panel effect. So now let's disable Gaussian Blur, now, if I wanted to add a color correction just to this section, just to her face and her neck here, the skin tone, whatever it is, I can come over to something like basic corrections. And let's do, let's just warm it up a little bit. So we'll just increase, adjust temperature ever so slightly, right? We don't want to go uh, um, transformers, <laughs> although we could, you know, but all right. So we'll keep it more color timing <laughs> style. All right, just a little bit of temperature, maybe even adjust the contrast a little bit here. Okay, like that. All right, let's just twirl this up so we can kind of click away. Okay, like that, play back. And by the way, here, hold on, I'm just going to add in my loop button here as well. I don't know how, why I disabled that. Let's go ahead and drag this one in here. I love having the loop function. All right, the reason I'm showing you the loop is because I can turn on or off and on. Let's even go bigger so we can see this happening. All right, zoom in here. We are in quarter res playback. But what I'm showing you is that there it is without, there it is with, without, with. And again, we can go even more extreme so it's more obvious to you. I think you're kind of getting the idea anyway. Uh, so let's just do a little bit more, all right? Now, there we go, play it back. No mask, no color correction, mask color correction. Off, on, off, on, awesome. Fit, done. Again, before, after. And by the way, if we wanted to add back in the Gaussian blur, all right, simply turn that back on and we've got that too. So now we have the blurred face with the color correction also applied. So flexible, so easy, that's it. Mystery, mystery solved there. Masking and tracking in Premiere Pro really easily with any effect. So any effect that you add here, again, you can even see we have those masks automatically applied to opacity as well. And then any additional effect that you add in here, you can copy and paste masks between effects real easily, real simply. This can be used for effects processing, can be used for secondary color. As mentioned, the reason why I prefer this method versus taking the color samples is because especially in a case like this, if we took this, it's probably going to pick up some of those additional tones, right? And we don't want that. And there's no way to tell this to avoid those tones. We can subtract them out of there, but the native skin tone is just a little too close. This way we keep it confined right to the area that we mask real easily, real efficiently. All right, so that is it. Brief, easy, fast, my fastest live stream ever. Probably not, I still went a bit long. Uh, let's just see if there's any questions in here. All right, Nicola, what's up? Pablo Reyes, all right, John Archer, hello there. Stephanie Reed, ooh, a new video that will be coming soon, awesome. Hope you're feeling better, Stephanie, as well. Uh, let's bounce over to YouTube here. Dylan Saliba, oh, thank you so much. You're very kind, love your work and teachings. All right, Rich Hawks II, Beetle Jace, what's good? Love your tutorials. Ah, well, thank you, thank you very much. All right. Well, it doesn't appear to be a lot of questions, just a lot of love, and you know what? I'll take it. So with that, my friends, thank you so much. Of course, you'll be able to watch the replay on the Adobe Video Facebook, on uh, my YouTube channel, on Twitter Periscope. I'll be back later this evening. What's up, Symbolic Agency? I think I'm gonna be doing a night stream night stream. I mean, I haven't done a night stream in a while. Just to see what kind of audience we get, I'll be doing that on the Premiere Pro Facebook page later this evening. So I hope you've enjoyed the live stream today. Thank you so much wherever you are in the world, and we will see you again next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks, Tomahawk. Bye.